Hello everybody! Today we're going to be completely transforming this bathroom. This was actually a part of a larger project in which I added an ensuite bathroom to the wall behind the mirror here, and then a laundry room to the wall behind the tub. Those videos will be available on my channel, so check them out if you are interested. To start off the demo, I always like to remove the larger fixtures first. This just gives a lot more leg room, space to film, and whatnot. And I had my buddy Jeff actually give me a hand here, and that was a huge help. This is usually a really exhausting process, having to not only remove everything, but then take it down the stairs and into the bin. So having him here, despite this actually being his first time doing something like this, was just a massive help. Uh, and he did a really phenomenal job too. So thank you, Jeff, for your help here. When it comes to bathroom remodels, one of the most important thing to consider is, of course, the water situation. So during the demo process, I always like to shut off the water supply to the house and get those water lines capped as early as possible. Just using the shark bite end caps to do so as a temporary measure. And then you can kind of rest assured that everything's going to be okay. If you have to remove a giant mirror like this one, I suggest taping it up to avoid any injury if it shatters, and then going ahead and removing the floors here. I always love when the floors come up nice and easy like this. You never know what you're going to find below a floor, so this was a pleasant surprise to be sure. Of course, have the builder special where they drop the ceiling in the shower area, which is always a pain to redo because it's always full of blown insulation, but it's really worth the effort in my opinion. And then also they had this little accent piece above the vanity, which just had to go. I decided it would be best to just remove this wall completely. Having to redo and skim coat the entire wall would have just been a lot of work. Plus it gives access for all the plumbing and electrical work. In that corner there, there'd be a linen closet eventually, hence why I kind of opened it up. And then opening up the subfloor to get access to all the plumbing. As I'd mentioned earlier, we're going to have to be tying into this for the other projects that are taking place at the same time. So opening up and getting an eye on that main stack there was very useful to kind of planning out the next steps in this project. This is the rough framing for the niche. I really only care about the width when it comes to this. The height will actually be determined once the first wall of tile is done. So I just make sure it will fit my prefab niche in width wise and then move on. Builder grade fans are just absolutely useless, so taking this one out and replacing it with a Panasonic Whisper was just a quiet and more powerful fan. Given the change to the floor plan with these renovations and demoing out the existing linen cabinet on this floor, we had to put in a new one, and this just seemed like the most optimal place. So this is a 24 by 24 inch little cavity framing up here and just gluing down some extra flooring they had to match what's existing. My plumbers came in for this work, but I'll try to give you just a brief little look at it. So this is the existing three inch pipe, which feeds both the tub and the toilet in this bathroom. We branched off that with another three inch, which feeds the other bathroom. You can see the two inch pipe there ran through the joist that feeds the shower and vanity on the other side, and then the three inch that goes above the joist to actually feed a wall mounted toilet. The homeowners really didn't want a bulkhead below, so instead we came up with this creative little solution and just had a small box in this bathroom that's behind the toilet that ties in that three inch there. You can just see all the vent work above, which ties into the existing vent in this bathroom. And then here is the laundry room pipe. So coming off the stack once again with a two inch to connect a floor drain and the washer connection and then a vent once again coming off of that and tying in to what's existing. Here's just sort of the stub outs for the vanity. Pretty basic stuff here. And then here is the shower system. So came down with a copper pipe for the tub spout and then we have our handheld and our rain head mounted nice and high. As mentioned earlier, in order to frame out this linen closet, some of the electrical had to be relocated. So as to avoid rewiring half this floor, just put in a couple of junction boxes, one above the door there as it will just never be seen, very inconspicuous. And then another one actually mounted below. Uh, that way I could successfully 
extend all of the wires and get them to where they needed to go. This here is one of the countertop plugs and there'll be another one on the other side. However, I just left the wire buried in the stud space so that once the vanity was in, I could cut it out and get it to be perfectly symmetrical. This here is the floor heat box, just a four by four with a plastering, a couple of half inch ENTs coming down to the subfloor. That way, we'll be able to get our floor heating cables ran up nice and smoothly. With all of the plumbing work done, I could finally close up this floor, which was a huge relief considering my plumber's apprentice actually had his foot come through it at one point, which was so much fun. <laughs> and then moving on, getting the pot lights done. Put in four pot lights in this room, three running down the center, one in the shower. And here is that box I had mentioned that houses the three inch drain for the toilet on the other side there. For the ceiling here, just putting up some 5 8 inch drywall, and then for the walls, half inch green board. Something I want to address in regards to this is you don't have to use green board behind the Schluter membrane system. Regular drywall is what the manufacturers actually recommend. I typically go with green board just because when I'm doing bathrooms, I, I buy all my drywall in, in big batches. So it's just easier for me to kind of get the same thing and then just use it everywhere. Applying the membrane system using a V-notch trowel, getting my thin set on there. You really want to make sure your thin set is on the runnier side for this, and you just take a drywall knife and collapse those ridges, getting the air out. You don't want to be squeezing the thin set out from underneath. I know in the beginning I struggled a lot with this system because I was overdoing it. You're just trying to get it to adhere to the wall, getting full coverage. This is Dietra Heat, and I think if there was one thing that I had to recommend to people when doing a bathroom remodel, it would be considering getting a floor heating system. It's a little bit on the pricier side, but if it was my bathroom, this is 100% the area I would splurge on. It's just really nice when you go into your bathroom with bare feet and it's not cold. This is a 24 inch by 24 inch glossy tile. I didn't get the name of it, unfortunately, but if you go to your tile supplier, you could absolutely find something similar. I use the wedge tile system, as always, with the 1 16th grout lines. <laughs> I, I just really do not like larger grout lines. I think 1 16th is just nice and small, but it still kind of allows you to work with the tile and make sure everything's nice and tight with one another. And then, of course, with my niche, you can see I get my laser established on that other wall, getting that bottom grout line for the bottom of my niche. And I just cut it out and put in this 20 by 12 prefab niche. With a niche, of course, the bottom tile going in first to get the desired slope and then just finishing off the rest of it. I use the metal profiles with miters on my chop saw to get it nice and sleek. And you'll notice I use a combination of tape, clamps, and those little red wedges to get everything perfect. I think when you're talking about tile work, it's it's one of those things where 1 64th of an inch is a big deal. So precision is very important. If installing a floor heating system, it's really important to remember how to account for the proper size of wire. You see, these things can't be cut down and it's really easy to overestimate just how much you need. You gotta remember that you gotta keep it a certain distance away from walls, you can't run it under the vanity, you gotta keep it away from plumbing fixtures, floor registers, all of these things that really just shorten the length that you need. As I'm installing these floor tiles, you may notice the painter's tape I have on them. That is just to indicate both a number system and the direction the tile will go in. When I do floors, I like to dry fit at least the first two or three rows. That way I can make sure that my print flows continuously as best as I can get it. So then when I take it out, I like to mark them so I can remember which tile goes where. In regards to the floor register, this is the Aria Vent flush mount, and man was I ever happy with this thing. It was just really sleek, and I think it's a small thing that adds a lot of detail to a space like this. The grout here is Laticrete's Frosty, really nice light gray color. And once I finish the entire surround area, I actually take a damp sponge and just lightly go over everything. After another half hour to an hour or so, I take a microfiber towel and polish everything off. 
The floor is the same Laticrete Grout, but in Silver Shadow. For any change of plane, you want to apply silicone. I use Laticrete's Frosty to match the grout. It really comes out nice. I use a soapy water spray and a popsicle stick to get it nice and smooth. And then I move on to the plumbing fixtures. To install everything, I actually use both Teflon and Pipe Dope because I am paranoid and I hadn't seen a tub spout like this before. Really cool stuff, just bends out of the way, so if you have kids, it will help with bathing them. And finally, moving on to the painting process. Of course, with the new drywall and mud, have to prime it. You cannot skip this step or it will be a disaster. And then the color here is Drift of Mist by Sherwin-Williams. Really nice gray that flowed nicely with the tile. Uh, I like this paint a lot, it went on nice. Just reusing the existing door from the old linen closet here, shimming it out, brad nailing it into place. Getting in this monstrosity of a vanity. This is an 84 inch double sink and I had to get the homeowner help me carry this thing up the stairs, so thank you so much to him for helping out because this thing weighed an absolute ton. Here is the outlet I had mentioned earlier, cutting it out after the fact because now with the vanity in, I can ensure that it's going to be perfectly symmetrical. Then just taking a paintable caulking along the top of the backsplash piece so that it can get painted the same color as the wall, and a transparent silicone for where any of the stone meets one another. Hang the mirrors now, just using drywall anchors to do so as they're nice and light, and then cutting out my wall sconces. Same thing with the receptacle, just left the wires buried in the wall so that I could get them perfectly spaced in regards to the mirrors. And they wanted tiled baseboards, so pretty easy install here. We got a tile profile along the top, and then where it meets the wall gets a paintable caulking, and where it meets the floor, we get the same color silicone as the grout. And thank you for watching. If you are located in the Toronto area, my contact information will be down below. And other than that, I hope you enjoyed. For any additional information, be sure to check the description as well as the end of the video, because my most common asked question is how much did this cost? And the information is always in the video. <laughs> Anyways, thank you once again, and have a beautiful day.